Hi everyone, happy hump day uh, here at Northern Spy Golf Club, um, Derek's Daily Dose. Uh, today we're going to talk about bunkers, short shots, longer shots. Uh, we don't have a sponsor again today, it kind of ran out. Um, so if anyone uh, wants a shout out, uh, wants to uh, wants to get uh, involved sponsorship wise, just reach out to me. Uh, before I get into this, I just want to piggyback and talk about uh, something from yesterday uh, in regards to green reading. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll watch these after the fact and I realize that I've omitted, you know, sometimes minor things, sometimes uh, pretty major things, you know, I get going uh, off, the, off the cuff here and we want to really touch on a, a lot of the important topics uh, and sometimes I miss some things. Um, so to piggyback to yesterday, uh, we talked about how, how the eyes, we don't capture as much uh, information uh, as we could um, and how our eyes can play tricks on us. Uh, and another tool that you can use when you're reading greens is definitely your feet. Um, anyone that's uh, uh, knowledgeable about aim point, um, you see guys on, on tour, it's you know, Adam Scott where they're holding the fingers up. It's a pretty intensive process to, to learn you know, really what they're doing there and, and why they're doing it. Uh, but one of the major techniques in that is that they're using their feet to read the greens. So um, it's a tool that uh, it, with practice you can use and you can use effectively. Uh, it's just getting at certain points, certain break points in the green. Uh, anytime that your eyes are fooled or you may not see something, is getting in there with your feet. Uh, and what your feet will do that you'll be able to pretty easily tell which foot's above the other and vice versa and get subtle breaks in the greens that you may not be able to get with your eyes. So I, I uh, definitely wanted to touch on that. I did miss that from yesterday. So uh, we get into bunker shots. Uh, again, a lot, uh, we'll deal uh, with the short shots first. A lot of what uh, we dealt with will, will kind of harken back to the lesson we did in chipping and pitching uh, and using the bounce of the golf club uh, effectively. Uh, and when we want to use bounce, we definitely, uh, we, we don't want to use the leading edge in these golf shots because, you know, if we use that leading edge into the sand, that club's gonna dig and keep digging. Uh, and eventually what'll happen, all the energy will be lost. That club will stick in the sand. Uh, we won't transition enough energy through the golf ball. Uh, and it ha with that ball has a hard time getting out. So for a lot of you that, uh, that hit, you know, bunker shots and boom, um, that's all you got and that ball doesn't get out. Um, that's a lot because the leading edge getting in, uh, too involved in that shot. Uh, and we just don't have enough to, to follow through it and get through impact. Um, so when we want to use the, the bounce and the sole of the golf club, we need to make sure that that ball positions up, that that uh, butt ends pointed into our belly button, our hands get a little bit behind. If you notice what's going to happen, that leading edge comes off the ground a little bit. And now uh, the impact point is definitely more of the bounce of the club and the sole of the club. Um, so ball position up. Uh, I also like to uh, open my stance, kind of hit these like flop shots um, where we have a nice open stance uh, done properly. What that's going to do is that's going to create a path uh, that's left um, and really allows us to kind of cut underneath the golf ball, um, keep that leading edge off the ground, add loft to the golf club. Um, but one of the most common flaws I see in that regard is that uh, people set up properly but they don't, they don't swing based on how they're set up. So, you know, we get into a position where ball's up in front of our stance, you know, our hands are a little bit behind. You got a little bit of a uh, cup left wrist here. You know, we're maintaining that wrist angle. We're not letting that leading edge move. We talked about controlling the leading edge last week, um, but we're gonna get into a setup where I'm open to my target. You know, if my target's over here, we always, regardless of how we set up, whether we set up closed to try and manipulate the ball or we set up open to try and manipulate the ball, face always has to be aimed at target. So really make sure that your face is aimed at the target. My body is set up to the left and we have to make sure that we swing down our body line, okay? We set up there for a reason. We have to pad the golf club down our body line. I see a lot is people will get open and then they swing out to their target. When you swing out to your target from a poor setup position, we're not, it's from a good setup position for this shot, but when you don't follow your setup position, your arms and hands work away from your body. In this scenario, you're gonna shallow out your angle of attack a lot, and you're gonna hit a lot of skull shots uh, if you do this. So 
you have to get it in your head that you have to swing the golf club down your body line and not at your target, okay? If the face is aimed at your target, the ball's gonna go at your target, okay? Secondly, you know, we talk a lot about posture and setup. You know, normally, we did this in lesson one, we wanna get in a nice athletic posture where we have, you know, a little bit of uh, leg flex and we get into this nice posture. In, in these golf shots, um, I like to change my leg flex depending on what I'm trying to do in the shot. So a lot of times, you know, we've got a 15, 10, 15, 20 yard bunker shot. We're trying to get that ball up, get it on the green, let it land soft. Um, and we, this is one of the only golf shots that we do not want to hit the golf ball. We want to, you know, impact behind it. You've heard, you know, you want to be an inch behind it or two inches behind it is the proper amount to get underneath the golf ball and get it up on the green. Well, I think a lot of people, they try and hit two inches behind it. And when that happens, you know, their weight's shifting back, uh, they're changing, you know, their, their height and their knee angle. Um, and really now you're gonna get your arms and hands too involved, you're gonna get that leading edge involved uh, improperly, uh, and it doesn't work. If we um, grab a circle here, if we're swinging in posture from the right position, you know, we're gonna bottom the club out correctly every single time. Theoretically, if we add more knee angle bend, we're gonna get lower. And if we execute that, our bottoming out point is also gonna get lower. So if our bottoming out point gets lower, what's gonna happen is that club is gonna get into the sand earlier. Um, so I don't try and hit behind the ball. I make my bottoming out point lower, which means when I'm hitting these short shots, I get into my normal posture and then I add leg flex. So I get much lower. And what happens when I execute that shot is you'll hear that, hear that thump, that club's gonna bottom out a little bit lower, which means it gets into the sand a little bit earlier. Um, and it's gonna allow you to use the, the bounce in the sole of the golf club. Um, but get that ball airborne, make sure that you're impacting and, and getting in early enough so that you're not hitting uh, ball first, you're not hitting all ball, you're really hitting the sand, taking that sand, you're throwing it out on the green. So again, these, these short bunker shots, we wanna be open, we wanna have more leg flex, okay? We want that ball up in our stance, we want that face aimed at our target, um, and then we wanna harken back to um, the chipping and pitching lesson where we're controlling the leading edge and we're really using, you know, more of our chest uh, than we are anything else. So, you know, we're in this scenario and you'll see my lower end's really fixed, I'm not really moving it very much. I'm maintaining those knee angle bends. Um, and I think if you try it out um, with varying uh, uh, starting knee angle flexes, you'll realize that you can impact just behind the ball, you can impact a little bit further behind the ball, and you can even impact very far behind the ball for those maybe chunk and run uh, sand shots if you just play around with your initial posture and leg flex, okay? And wherever you get, you wanna stay. So if I get nice and low here, I'm staying in that position all the way through. So we're gonna uh, transition out of the shorter shots. We're gonna go more to uh, our longer bunker shots uh, so say you've got, you know, a full shot, 120, 140, 150 yard uh, bunker shot. In these scenarios, we, you know, the way these irons are set up, um, they don't have much bounce, right? So these are more of a, a digging type golf club. Um, so we want limited impact uh, with the sand at all. And, uh, you know, I also effectively will change my posture to make sure that happens and we want to get a little bit taller from the waist up. If you get a little bit more weight on your heels, you'll stand a little bit taller. And really what that does is that allows us to make golf swings where we have very, very, very limited uh, interaction with the turf. So if you get a little bit taller, um, you're not going to interact with the ground as much um, and you'll be a lot more successful. I think the key with these shots, just even like the shorter bunker shots, uh, is your lower half. Right? If you're shifting right, or you're straightening, if there's a lot of lower half movement here, uh, you're going to have a really hard time with your point of contact, making sure that it's correct. Um, so limit that. 
because you're limiting that, um, I think it's common to obviously not hit the golf ball as far. Um, so, uh, you know, in these scenarios, I usually club up one or two. So if I'm normally hitting a, uh, you know, a nine iron, I might go down to an eight iron or a seven iron in this scenario because I'm locking my lower half in. Um, and again, play around with that. It's kind of a trial and error type thing to see uh, what you'll be able to do. But, you know, in these full shots, if we're hitting the ball first and we're limiting the interaction with the sand itself, um, ideally what's going to happen is we're going to hit the ball pretty, you know, far enough to get that ball up around that intended area. You know, the worst shots you can hit from here is where you're hitting that sand, uh, you lose all that energy, you're not contacting the golf ball, and the ball's really only going to go, you know, at most 40, 50, 60 yards. Um, and then that brings us to these mid-range uh, bunker shots, which, you know, for me, from, a, uh, from both a teaching and a playing standpoint, I think they're one of the toughest shots in golf. Um, you have to be so precise uh, it, it, and exact uh, to get, you know, enough contact on the ball um, that, that you're getting the, the proper distance out of it. So, you know, these shots, you know, 50, 60 yards, if I'm using a sand wedge or, you know, or, or a lob wedge, um, I need to make sure that I'm, again, limiting impact with the sand. So uh, I will play these shots maybe more like a, uh, like we just talked about with a full bunker shot, um, where I'm getting taller, I'm tra really trying to mitigate the impact with the sand. Um, another way you could do it though, uh, and another successful way, is you could take a seven or an eight, maybe even a six iron, uh, and play it like a more traditional bunker shot where you're getting a little bit open. You know, you are gonna impact uh, the sand a little bit um, and, and play it more like a traditional bunker shot, but because of the loft change, because that loft is, a, uh, is much lower, uh, we're gonna get a little bit more uh, distance out of that. You know, that ball's not going uh, up in the air as much. It's gonna, you know, kind of shoot out and we'll get a little bit more distance out of it. Um, so again, it, the, this shot, I would play more. If you're stronger on your short around the green bunker shots, then I'd change club and try and stay more in that mold. If you're stronger with like the fuller bunker shots and really not impacting the turf, then you can go to a more lofted club and, and kind of play it that way. Um, but like we said before, anytime we're hitting these medium uh, bunker shots and we're not going at 100%, there's a tendency to, uh, to slow down. When we slow down, we lose control of the head of the golf club. That leading edge is going to get uh, it, it's going to get wonky, and then we're going to hit thin shots and fat shots. So, uh, really execute these shots. Uh, practice. You know, it's a shot that we don't hit very much. Um, so, if, you know, if you find yourself out on the golf course uh, or in an area where you're able to practice these shots, um, just you know, trial and error. Try it out. See which of these techniques works best for you, uh, and kind of go from there. So. Um, I, hope, uh, I hope everybody was able to uh, take a little bit of information uh, from, from bunker stuff today. Um, we'll be back tomorrow uh, with kind of uneven lies. Uh, we'll talk about uh, you know, uneven lies and, and the effect on, on those shots. Uh, and then Friday, I said Friday was a wild card day. Friday we're gonna do uh, uh, course management. Um, so excited to, uh, to talk really about the mental piece uh, to the game, some course management stuff. Uh, and then I got a couple plans for next week. Um, but uh, thanks for all the support. I've got a ton of uh, great feedback uh, from, uh, from everybody. Um, so I appreciate it. Uh, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.